Hear ye, hear ye, the unthinkable has happened. I have actually found a Glock that I don't hate. So, what what could have happened? What could have changed in, 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 in my in entire worldview of things to actually make me like and appreciate a, ooh, a Glock brand Glock? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, so, uh, anyone that knows me, uh, knows I have absolutely no love for the plastic fantastic Glock brand Glockazines as they are affectionately referred to by me um, and also Matt V 2099 if you're familiar with that guy's channel excellent stuff um, go watch him for for a good laugh but um, so uh, for the longest time I have hated Glocks I do not like them I have never owned shot one looked at one and thought, man, that's a cool gun. I like that gun. Wow. No, no, never, never have liked Glocks ever, ever, ever. Um, for a lot of reasons. Um, I'm probably pretty biased because I like 1911s. I grew up on 1911s. I think, uh, weapons in general should be, uh, you know, made out of metal, not plastic, just me. Um, and I prefer the really, really good trigger pulls of 1911s versus this abomination of a trigger. Um, <clears throat> so I know the trigger pulls are a little bit different between all the different generations, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Um, but no, no Glock trigger has ever impressed me ever. Uh, and that, that includes those super fancy like race gun triggers that people spend hundreds of dollars on to modify their quote unquote per perfect fucking Glock. You know, and people spend so much money into customizing their Glocks to make it something that it was never supposed to be in the first place. Uh, car guys will, will absolutely understand where I'm coming from uh, in that regard. But anyway, that is a topic for a different day. What I wanted to talk about was one Glock I came across recently on a recommendation of a very good friend of mine who has made excellent recommendations for me in the past. Um, he recommended uh, the absolute largest Glock Ever, this thing right here. This is a Glock 40, not Glock 40 Cal, but Glock Model 40 Gen 4 MOS, chambered in a true man's caliber 10 millimeter. So, um, I have never owned and never shot a 10 mil before this gun, and I was really looking to get into 10 millimeter because, um, you know. It, everyone talks about how cool 10 millimeter is. You're firing entire centimeters of bullet at people. It's it's one more millimeter than nine, so obviously it's that much better because nine is, of course, the do all, be all, end all pistol cartridge ever designed by man. But then 10, 10 millimeter literally takes it up to 10. Um, you know, and all those silly little anecdotes and stories you hear about 10 millimeter being the absolute best most manliest cartridge ever made, despite the fact that 45 ACP is, um, technically speaking, like, I think 11.4 millimeter or something like that. 45 ACP is actually a little bit larger than 10 millimeters as far as when it comes to, you know, the, the, the size of the bullet. But anyway, the point is 10 millimeter is supposed to be the shittest, hottest, best, um, fucking is cartridge round for pistols or at least, uh, auto loading pistols. Um, you know, the longest time. Um, Jeff Cooper liked it. The FBI agents couldn't handle it, so they made the the, the, the 40 Smith and Wesson because uh, you know 40 short and weak, 40 short and wimpy, um, or, or as I like to call it, 10 millimeter special or 10 millimeter short, depending you know if I want to be fancy about it. But um, anyway, 10 millimeter has this this is this is awesome like kind of um, mystique and appeal to it, and uh, I really wanted to see what all the hype was about, um, but with 10 millimeter, your options are a little bit limited as far as to what platforms you can get it in. It's either a Glock, a 1911, that weird Springfield XD, which I refuse to touch because I don't like XDs, or uh, one of those weird offerings um, for revolvers in 10 millimeter. Uh, I don't personally believe in revolvers that use um, auto loading cartridges. I think it's kind of silly because you have to use a little like moon clips and everything. I think that kind of defeats the purpose of a revolver. I don't, I don't like them very much, but um, so yeah, you're, you're you're kind of stuck as 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 to far as as what you can get 10 millimeter in. 
So um, I figured if, if I was going to buy another Glock and actually keep it, uh, I may as well get the largest, most obnoxious, craziest Glock I possibly can. So um, I got this Glock 40 10 millimeter, freaking ridiculous thing. Um, and unfortunately, they have not ported these over to Gen 5 yet. These, uh, All of these Glock 40s, as far as I know, are Gen 4. Um, and the other Glock I have here, <clears throat> this um, Glock Model 22, um, 40 cal, you know, police traded Glock is also a Gen 4. So I thought, man, this trigger is going to suck balls because the trigger on this one is absolutely terrible. I hate it. Um, <laughs> this pistol is seriously one of the most unpleasant pistols I have to shoot because the trigger sucks. It's 40 cal. Um, and it, it, honestly, even even putting the, the, the 9 mil uh, conversion barrel that I got for this, it, it, it's still not pleasant to shoot. I would, I would literally rather shoot 40 cal and 9 millimeter in any other pistol I own rather than this one. I hate this pistol that much. As I say, it doesn't work. This pistol has worked 100% reliably with both the 9mm and the 40 cal. It has worked 100%, no problems whatsoever. I just don't like shooting it. Um, anyway, so enough about my hate, my hate on Glocks. Uh, when I when I when I got this, um, I, I I don't know if if Glock does something different with the the uh, quote unquote the target models of their guns, like the Model 34 or the 41 or the 35. Uh, th those are all the long, super long slide variants. I don't know if they do something different with these, but the trigger pull on this one was way lighter than than this one was, but you know, by a, a noticeable amount. Uh, the trigger was much, much better on this gun uh, than than the 22 down there. Now, when I did some more research, I found that there is, of course, um, different. Uh, connector levers, I guess, that have different like weights to them. So I'm thinking what happened is, uh, and also Glock uh, offers their trigger pulls in, uh, in in different weights from the factory. So what I'm assuming is because this is a, this Glock 22 here is a police trade-in, this probably has a heavier trigger in it because uh, whatever department ordered this probably wanted a heavier law enforcement style trigger to make sure that the officer doesn't unintentionally discharge his firearm. Because as we know, uh, police officers are of course very well trained and uh, you know, uh, very good shots, right? Of course they are. They're not really, but um, it's also a story for another day. Anyway, so I think uh, knowing that, that this Something like this, the long slide versions of pistols are not going to be marketed towards law enforcement, but mostly recreational shooters like hunting and target shooters. They probably put a lighter uh, connector or trigger in these uh, from the factory on purpose. So that is definitely a welcome uh, addition because as anybody knows, stock lock triggers are absolutely terrible. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you shot locks. Uh, the, the, the triggers are not good, period. Uh, and no one, no one can convince me otherwise. Sorry, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <coughs> but <clears throat> as far as Glock triggers go, this one has been easily the best one I have shot. So uh, at least as far as stock triggers go, awesome. So that's already a bonus in this thing's favor. The second one is the fact that this thing is just absolutely massive and it actually fits my hand pretty well. Um, uh, you know, just, just looking at the frame size differences, you know, you, you can see the absolute width, the absolute chonkiness of the 40 versus the 22 over here. This thing is a big freaking gun. Uh, you know, definitely the frame size and everything else about this. It's, it's just big, man. And it actually fits my hand pretty well. Uh, when I took this out to the range and I put about 220 some odd rounds through this in one sitting, um, dude, my, my hands were, 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 were doing this number when I was done because um, I don't know if this is something a lot of other shooters experience too when, you, when you're firing a lot of um, like high recoil, uh, powerful rounds. Your hands, at least for me anyways, start to shake quite a lot. And I definitely noticed that um, after I put some really, really hot loads through this and I set it down, uh, the, the, the range I was at went on a ceasefire break and my hands were literally like shaking like visibly shaking, it was, it was kind of nutty. Um, but 
But anyway, uh, yeah, firing this and, and holding it and everything was actually not that bad. Um, I, I expected it to be enormously uncomfortable, kind of like all the impact going straight into my hand. Um, the whole the whole thing about oh, Glock frames are polymer, so they they flex and they absorb the recoil and blah blah blah. <clears throat> I don't really buy into that too much. I think it's a lot of hype um, <clears throat> and mythos and mythology built up by a lot of fans of the Glock pistol. Uh, but to be honest, I, I I don't know what it is about this pistol. Maybe it's the big old honking honking slide on this thing, the big chungus slide on this. Uh, and all the mass and everything in this gun that kind of makes the recoil not too bad but uh really the recoil on this gun was, was really not all that bad and this is this is actually more pleasant to shoot than this piece of crap right here uh oddly enough <clears throat> even with the uh the, the wider range of 10 millimeter loads that i used uh the, the the 40 was just way more pleasant to shoot than the 22. i don't know what it is uh Maybe the weight made a difference. I, I I don't know if the ergonomics are a little bit different. I mean, they're both Gen 4s. I don't know how much different they could be. Maybe it's the frame size. Maybe it's the recoil spring. I don't know. The <clears throat> the point was, the Glock 40 is, is very fun to shoot. Very pleasurable to shoot. Uh, which is actually quite a lot of praise coming from me because I absolutely hate everything about Glocks. Uh, but this one was actually not that bad. <clears throat> so, um... How did it shoot, actually? So I tested a, a, a wide range of loads because uh, the the other thing that a lot of people like to say about 10 millimeter is that uh, not all loads are created equal. So I wanted to see for myself. I went out to my local stores and I bought um, Blazer Brass 10 millimeter. I bought um, Sig Sauer Elite Performance 10 millimeter, just the regular FMJ stuff, nothing fancy. Uh, and I also bought SNB uh, 10 millimeter, just regular ball stuff. And then I also bought a box of Buffalo Bore 180 grain uh, hollow points that were going 1350 feet a second, I think. Uh, pretty hot stuff. The, the hottest stuff that I bought. Anyway, so uh, I tested uh, all of these loads through this gun, and uh, I will definitely say what they say is absolutely true. Uh, some of these loads are are definitely not loaded the same as others. Uh, I will say the 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 Sig 10 millimeter uh, is definitely a much much hotter load than the SMB or the Blazer. The Blazer was easily the weakest, which kind of coincides with the rest of the experience I have with Blazer Brass. I don't like shooting Blazer Brass. I think it's low quality ammo. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's very accurate or very clean. I try to avoid Blazer Brass as much as I can. Um, SNB, however, was a little bit different. SNB is normally pretty good stuff, and if you get some of their more like uh, obscure mil surf loadings, like a nine millimeter Makarov and SNB, it tends to be a little hot. Uh, but the SNB ten millimeter was, I, I would say, not weak, but not necessarily super strong either. And SNB ten millimeter also uses small pistol primers, not large pistol primers. So. I don't know if that makes a difference for some people. Maybe for reloaders it does, but for me, I did not notice any particular difference in the shooting aspect of it. So the SIG was uh, definitely a, a full power 10 millimeter load. It was quite stout, but very controllable, very accurate, very high quality ammo. I really, really like SIG uh, ammunition. Great, great stuff. Um, and then of course the hottest load that I bought was the, uh, the Buffalo Boar stuff that I tried because Buffalo Boar has a reputation obviously for making pretty powerful loads. So I wanted to see for myself uh, just how powerful it is, what the difference is, how it felt and everything. And man, I will tell you that thing is a freaking cannon. It is like, wow. So uh, normal, normal 10 millimeters, is, 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 you know, it's, 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 a, it's a boom, you know, bang. You get a nice little muzzle flip. The Buffalo Boar 10 meter was like a kablam, a kaboom, every shot. It was, I'm doing this number, and the pistol's coming up like this, rather than coming up just a little bit like that, versus the Buffalo Boar was like, boom. Um, I kind of relate it a bit to um, firing like a, a 44 Magnum like revolver, right? And, and just seeing how much that, that pistol will come up like this after you shoot it, it was kind of like that. Um, so the, the, in general, the recoil impulse that I could describe for a 10 millimeter is the, the, the impulse 
the, the, the magnitude and impulse and feel of a 45 caliber uh, pistol basically pushing back on you, but with the muzzle flip of say, a uh, 357 Magnum out of like say a four inch revolver, six inch revolver. Um, so it, it the muzzle the muzzle rise is definitely very pronounced, but the impulse back onto you feels very much like a 45 pistol. So um, definitely something kind of in between there. So uh, it, it it was controllable. It, it was definitely more powerful and a little bit you know not as quick to shoot as say a nine millimeter. But uh, you you definitely feel it when you shoot 10 millimeter. It, it it puts hair in your chest. It wakes you up. It, it adds a little bit of extra testosterone to your uh, to your body. You know, it, 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 you know. <laughs> you really know when you're shooting a 10 millimeter. So I will say the uh, a, a little bit of the, the the mythos that's kind of around 10 millimeter and like oh this is a true man's cartridge blah blah blah. Uh, there is a little bit of truth to that. So. Uh, I will say I, I absolutely enjoyed every single 10 millimeter shot that I took out of this pistol. It was it, it was just so much fun, uh, big big booms, big bangs, and also quite accurate to boot. So uh, the accuracy potential, I tested all the loads that I could as, as best I could. But to be honest, uh, the, the day I was out there, that that wind was blowing something fierce. And if you've never tried to shoot pistols at 25 yards offhand, you know while the while the wind is going, you know, you're, you can kind of hold a good sight picture if you're just standing there and the wind is calm, but the wind blowing you around and you're having your arms like all the way out like that, like your, you know, your regular target pose with the pistol, um, your, your sight picture is doing this. The wind is, is going to blow you around. Like I, I don't, I don't know of a way to mitigate that really other than waiting for the wind to kind of like stop for a little bit. Um, uh, but the, having the strong, strong winds blow you around like that really messes up a consistent sight picture. So uh, for the most part, most of my targets had like, um, out of the 15 shot strings that I did for each target, and sometimes 10, depending on the, how much I had left in the mag. So uh, I would usually end up with a very, very small, very tight group, at, you know, with say more than half of the magazine through it, but then I would have like two or three other flyers that were just way, way off the mark. And I, I'm, I'm going to guess that is because of the wind and how it was pushing me around and everything. Because it, it's, it's at, at any distance under 25, I was very, 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 very consistent with this pistol. Um, considering I've never shot it before or 10 millimeter or anything like that, have no prior experience with this gun. I shot it very, very, very well. Uh, the best group that I got at 25 yards with uh, the SIG uh, ammunition was right at 3 inches. So not the best I've shot with pistols at 25 yards, uh, but considering all the other factors of inexperience with the pistol, the fact that I hate Glock triggers, um, these awful, awful, awful stock Glock sights with that stupid U-notch and the dot, I absolutely hate that sight picture. Uh, the wind blowing me around, inexperience with 10 millimeter, blah, 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 blah. I can make excuses all day. The point is, I think three inch group at 25 yards with this pistol is certainly respectable for uh, what I was able to accomplish at the time. So the pistol can certainly do its part. Uh, if I do mine, I think I can definitely tight tighten that grouping up, uh, give it more practice and better conditions, of course and maybe after I mount an optic on this because the MOS models, of course, have the, uh, the mounting plate here in the back. You can mount your favorite pistol dot optic, although I am curious to see what the, um, I wanna say it's the Vortex Venom or Viper, whichever one is the, is the, the Vortex pistol dot that's a three MOA, whichever one that is, I can't remember the name to be honest because Vortex's naming convention is so confusing to me. I can't remember any of them. But the pistol dot that is a 3 MOA dot, that's the one that I have, and that's the one I want to try on this gun, and we'll see how it holds up to the, the rigors of 10 millimeter on a slide. Oh, yeah. And see if it beats it up or not. I don't know. Um, I really don't have a whole lot of experience with pistol dots because I don't think they're necessary. Uh, I've trained my entire life on shooting just regular old iron sights on everything, and they're perfectly uh, usable for pretty much whatever you need to do, honestly. Um, I don't see a whole lot of point in pistol dots myself. I'm not sold on the idea yet. 
then again, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of experience in them, so maybe some people might find them easier, find them better, faster, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that, that's, that's a debate I believe that is still going on right now, and uh, I don't expect it to be resolved anytime soon. Anyway, so um, overall, this pistol is freaking great. Uh, and I never thought I would say that about any Glock that I owned ever, because I've, I've owned more Glocks than, 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 than just these two before, uh, and I have moved the rest of them because I hated them that much. Uh, I, I found no purpose in them, I did not enjoy shooting them, I was not even particularly accurate with them, using of course the stock sights. Now, this this 22 being a you know uh, law enforcement gun that has three dot night sights, so that's a little bit different, but anyway. Um, so, unusual for me to give praise to a Glock pistol of any kind, and definitely one that is as off the wall, obtuse, obtrusive, obnoxious, huge as this monstrosity of a pistol. I mean, this this is a six inch barrel, a ten millimeter. That that is freaking nuts. Like. <laughs> Um, you know, the other 10 millimeter pistol offerings out there, if you're going to get a six inch 1911 and then 10 millimeter, you're going to be paying way, way more than you will for this. So, um, though that being said, it still has the shortcomings of a Glock pistol that, um, it, which, which is numerous, uh, to be fair. Uh, one of which is absolutely crap controls. I hate the stock, uh, slide lock release lever. Hate it, hate it, hate it. It is too small. It is uh, just not meant for, for what this pistol I think is designed for. Uh, I've never liked any of the slide lock release levers on stock lock pistols. Now I know there are uh, a million and one different aftermarket things and I am going to be buying a lot of aftermarket for this pistol because like I said, if I, if I was gonna buy one Glock and keep it, um, then, then this would be the one, and I am going to go out of my way to modify this one as much as I want because, um, let's be honest, a, a stock Glock, even this one, is incredibly boring and uh, honestly needs improvement for the ergonomics. So that is my one big gripe is that stupid slide lock release lever is way too small, way too flat. Hate it, don't like it. And I do not subscribe to the argument that you should just slingshot your pistol. No. Um, like I said, growing up with 1911s and everything, we I never trained that. It was always it was always slide lock back, open on that, you put your mag in, you hit that slide release right there, and the slide just goes. With this, you can't really do that because it's just too damn small. I hate it. Um Ergonomics, of course, are not the best uh, of pistols. Uh, I've never had a Glock that fit my hand really all that well. Uh, so when I said that this one actually fit my hand pretty well, I meant it fit my hand pretty well for a Glock, which is not saying much. So uh, it's not perfect, but it works. So, <laughs> I mean, that's really a lot of things you can say about a lot of features on a Glock is that it's not perfect, but it works. So. Um, yeah, I've had absolutely, uh, through the 220 rounds I've put through this, zero failures, zero malfunctions, no issues whatsoever. Uh, reasonably accurate for what I can do with it, given my experience level and the sights and everything else. This is a completely stock pistol, and I have not mounted an optic on it yet. So, um, you know, I think it, it definitely made a good showing for Glock in my kind of realm of experience and kind of redeemed Glock as a pistol brand in general to me. Um, that being said, I really don't expect everybody to be going out there and buying these things because the one, these are kind of rare and two, it's 10 millimeter and three, these things are just, just, I mean, look at it. It's just big, man. So most people are going to stick with your 17s, your 22s, your 19s, your 23s. So. I will say though, uh, after all the time that I've, I've handled this Glock 40, uh, any other Glock that feels like this, like your regular size 22, 19, uh, 17, 23 size, they, they just feel like toys. They don't weigh anything. They're super, super light. Um, they're so small. <laughs> like it, it just, these just feel like nothing compared to this. You know, I, I just, I, I can't, 
Um, I can't even say enough of just how obnoxiously large these things are. It's, it's, it's insane. So, um, it, it definitely has the, uh, the, the, the cool factor, the ridiculousness factor, at least for me. Um, you know, so it, it, it's a cool gun. What else can I say? Right? So not only does it work well, because obviously it's a Glock pistol, it's going to work well. I can never fault Glock for that. Their pistols have in general always worked pretty well for me. Reasonably priced. Uh, this pistol was like 750 out the door. Not bad. I could probably get it cheaper, but a local store had it right there on the shelf, and I was like, nah, nah I'll just, nah, just buy it, whatever. Um, aftermarket accessories are absolutely everywhere. Even, even for this gun, there is a lot of aftermarket accessories. So, um, so yeah, they, they, they just work, and the cool factor, obviously, it, it's a 10 millimeter, so the cool factor is already just climbing off of the charts. Um, if you've never shot a 10 millimeter, I would really, really, really encourage you to try one at least once. Um, and if you can try all different kinds of loads, so you can really see like the range of, of, of power that a 10 millimeter has. It's kind of akin to uh, 38 special or 30, uh, 357 magnum, uh, 44 special, 44 magnum, and like the different range of loads that you can have. Now they're not as clearly advertised as I would like, uh, but your range of loads is still like available. So. Uh, that, that's pretty cool to me. So anyway, uh, I am absolutely sold on 10 millimeter now. Um, I think it's such a cool cartridge. It's really, really fun to shoot. It's pretty accurate. And when it comes in ridiculous packages like this, I mean, like th this thing will just put a smile on your face, you know? And there, there's definitely something to be said about fun factor, cool factor, all put together. Not everything you own has to, ha has to exist for a practical reason. Now, could this be used for practical reasons? Absolutely it could. Uh, you know, but at the same time, not everything I own needs to be practical. It just needs to be, you know, fun or cool or something different about it. And this pistol, even though it is a clock and it is boring and it's plastic fantastic and blah, 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 the rest of it, it's still a pretty cool gun. So um, I don't know <laughs> anything else more I can say about this because Glocks are Glocks. Uh, everybody has one. Everyone owns one. Everyone's seen one. It's no big deal. But uh, in fact, a lot of my friends have actually mistaken this for like a Glock 34 because it, they just see the long slide and think, ah, it's, it's a nine millimeter, whatever. Common, a very, very common race gun that you'll see in like steel, uh, steel challenge and things like that. But this, this is six inches of 10 millimeter, man. And it is cool. So I will never let anybody ever tell me otherwise. 10, 10 millimeter is cool. Six inches of 10 millimeter is cool. It doesn't matter what kind of platform you have it in. It's just cool, man. So um, like I said, give 10 millimeter a try. Uh, find something to shoot it in. You know, I, I guarantee you will put a smile on your face. It is just that cool. So anyway, um, that's really all I got to say about this pistol. So um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to putting many, many, many more rounds through this gun. Uh, provided I can find some 10 millimeter, it's not going to break the bank because it's kind of expensive. And uh, I'm also going to see what I can do about getting that Vortex pistol dot on here and seeing what kind of groups and accuracy I can get and also to see if it destroys the optic or not. So um, I'll be making some more updates on this pistol in the future as uh, my round count goes up and I get more practice in with it and hopefully some better, some better groups and better conditions. So anyway. Um, yeah, all I got to say about that, and uh, we'll see you next time.